WNST, Dallas and Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. We are uh, positively uh, having some great conversations. We've done a ton on the draft all over the Orioles, all over the World Cup. We're a couple weeks away from potentially having World Cup games right here in old Balmer. But uh, Don Moeller's back on the beat right now. We're going to be uh, getting the Maryland Crab Cake Tour back out on the road. I'm giving some Betty Boop scratch-offs away. Uh, we're doing Conrad's in Perry Hall this week on the 6th. Uh, a little down week next week, and then we're really going to be ramping it up as we head into May and June and outdoor activities. We're going to be at the Land of Cush. All of it brought to you by the Maryland Lottery, as well as our friends at Goodwill. And our friends at Window Nation. I don't have a Window Nation hat or shirt yet. Don, um, with this Roe v. Wade situation, you and I did a uh, very, very spicy version of the recon this week. You're on to, we're going to get to the legal side of this, but, but health, just health in general. And I know it's sort of sparked your interest in getting more advocates for health and more advocates uh, in our community. And this is a defending champion. I'm going to let you do the honors here. No, no stronger advocate certainly for uh, health care in the state of Maryland all across the nation than the president of the Maryland Citizens Health uh, Initiative Education Fund, Vinny DeMarco. He's been out there on the ground for years fighting this fight. And Vinny, thanks for all you do. And welcome back to Baltimore Positive. Thanks for having me on, Don, and I'm a big fan of yours and all you've done for Baltimore County and the oh. state. Thank you. Hey, hey, you gave a mouthful there, Don. What'd you say he's the head of what? Say that again. No, me, I was like, the Maryland Healthcare Coalition Initiative, right, Vinny? You could call it the Maryland Healthcare for All Coalition. There you go. Maryland Healthcare for All Coalition. Vinny, what does that mean at heart? Like, how long has this organization been? Give everybody a little bit of background on what it is and what you do fundamentally. Well, thank you. Uh, uh, we and and I'm thank you for being on your show. I know your show is very popular, and I'm honored to be on it. No and one we listens. Were, everyone hears. Well, that's <laughs> oh, listen to that. We we were formed in 1999. Former Baltimore City Health Commissioner Peter Bielinson, Dr. Peter Bielinson, brought a group of us together, and we formed this organization with the goal of quality, affordable health care for all Marylanders. And we've made a lot of progress in that direction, particularly because of the Affordable Care Act. The number of people uninsured in Maryland dropped from 13% of our population to under 6%. Over 400,000 people have gotten health care recently. We passed our first in a nation prescription drug affordability board legislation 2019 to make high cost drugs more affordable. And that's been replicated all across, uh, all across the country. We're doing a lot. We're leading the way. We have the first in the country easy enrollment program that people can file for uh, uh, sign up for healthcare at tax time. So it's easy for them. And our hero, Senator Chris Van Hollen, has put in a national legislation to do this all across the country. So we've made a lot of progress in the last um, uh, 20 years, 20 plus years. And one of the issues we're really focused on is health inequity, health disparities. That is a serious, serious problem in Maryland, Baltimore, and across the country. And last year, under the leadership of Senator Antonio Hayes, They'll get Jazz Lewis. We passed the First in Nation Health Equity Resource Communities Law, which is putting over $60 million over the next uh, few years into community funded programs to um, reduce uh, health disparities. We're really excited about that run by the Maryland Community Health Resources uh, Commission. So a lot's going on. There's a lot more to do, but we've accomplished a lot. Well, Vinny, well, let's me, talk. Yeah, I was, so ahead, give now. me an example of somebody that, 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 you help, you know, somebody that in the, I told a story earlier uh, today and Don, I'm going to add to the recon here. Okay. So I'm stacking up kind of like algebra one and algebra two. I had a, a pregnant girlfriend when I was 15 years old, because we've been talking our, our Roe v. Wade insurance issues, uninsurance. I, I had to think about this, Don, my, my girlfriend was on WIC programs. You know what I mean? Like all, really we, 15 pregnant and in need. That's who I was in 1984, right, a a as a parent. And um, insurance for me didn't matter. It was insurance for her because she was the one having the baby. We come to you. What do we say what, what, when that happens? Because that's a real story. That's, that, that hits home. That really happened to me. 1984, I didn't know about you. Yeah, well, there was a lot less going on in 1984 than there is now. But someone like her would get coverage, including, thanks to law, put in by Delegate Justin Peña Melnick and Senator Clarence Lamb, if that woman happened to be undocumented, she would still get coverage 
for her pregnancy and for her or her baby under Medicaid. What I want to emphasize is that we have helped people, and I'm going to give you an example. When we expanded Medicaid, even before the Affordable Care Act in Maryland, we met a woman in Garrett County who was sick and going to the doctor, and she didn't know what to do. But before she went, she took her kids to the local health department and said, do you have health care for my kids? And they told her, thanks to this new law, this new Medicaid expansion, we have it for you. So she, they, she got on Medicaid. A couple of weeks later, she went to the doctor and the doctor said to her, you are so lucky you got this Medicaid because if you didn't have it, you would have developed something. We couldn't have fixed it now and you would have died. And, you, and, and one thing I want to emphasize to all the listeners, that woman would have been sick for a while, but before she died, she would have run up huge hospital bills, which she couldn't have paid. We would have all paid a hidden health care tax. Whenever an uninsured person goes to an emergency room, we have a hidden health care tax we all pay. So we all benefit when health care is expanded. That's the kind of story which has been replicated tens of thousands of times. And on our website, there's a wonderful publication called Faces of Maryland's Newly Insured, which describes how people have helped. Healthcareforall.com is our website. But there are still almost 6% of our population uninsured, almost 350 to 400,000 people. We want to do something about that. That's why we uh, ran this op-ed that was published in the Baltimore Sun last week, which outlines our three steps. It's a three-legged stool to go from 6% to 0%. Now, let's be proud of what we've done. We're like the fifth best state in the country. Massachusetts is at 3%. We want to zoom past them. So 94% of the people in our state, when they check into an emergency facility, an ambulance comes and get them, God forbid they have a car accident, get hit by lightning, whatever happens, 94% of our citizens are insured. Yes, yes. That's incredible. And, Don, that's yeah. an incredible number. I almost don't believe that number. It's no, true. It's, 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 and again, it's, it's, it's folks like Vinny and legislator, and folks who've worked together on this that makes us very proud to live in a state. Uh, that's able to do that. Vinny, let's take the op-ed and walk our listeners through. You talked three prong. Prong one is make it easier for people to enroll in health insurance. Right. Tell us what that means. Well, the fact is that of the 350 to 400,000 people who are still uninsured, tens of thousands of them are eligible right now for free Medicaid coverage or really low cost, maybe a dollar a month uh, Affordable Care Act coverage. They don't know about it. There are hurdles. We believe it's simply better for everybody if the government, if they know that this person is eligible, enrolls them with the opt-out ability. So if through the tax filing or whatever filing you do, the government knows you're eligible for this program, you will get a letter under our proposal saying, next, starting next month, you're going to be on Medicaid unless you let us know you don't want to do it. We think that will get tens of thousands of new people enrolled and reduce the hidden health care tax of uninsured people going to the emergency room. Automatic enrollment is critical. Give me that again, because like these people who are uninsured, right? Like literally yeah. something bad happens. In a lot of cases, they might not be in the greatest shape to begin with. The yeah. paramedics show up and here we go, right? They have no yeah. money. They, right. have, they have no Listen, I've driven from Oakland to Ocean City. We have poverty in this state. You know, we do. Yes. Uh, you, uh, you, you, don't, you don't need to make an example of the city. You can go anywhere and, and find poverty in this state. So that person goes to wherever, or God forbid, like my wife gets leukemia, right? My wife had two and a half million dollars in medical expenses. What happens? So they show up at person X who could be black, white, male, female, city, wherever in the state of Maryland. They go to an emergency room. We resuscitate them. We try to keep them alive. They're on this. They're on that. There's tubes. There's bills. They're in the hospital 10 days. My God, they make it or they don't make it. Either way, the hospital's getting paid, right? Yeah, yes, we have a system in Maryland, unlike some states that have charity hospitals and things like, we don't have any of that. We have a unique, well put together, all payer hospital system, which keeps costs low. But what it means is someone goes into the hospital, can't pay, run up a huge cost. It is automatically put in all our premiums go up to pay for that. So right now- That seems we, fundamental, but I want to like stop and get yeah, through that, it, right? Like, yeah, that seems yes. pretty fundamental that somebody's got to pay. Oh, we all pay. Through really? higher health insurance premiums directly. 
In other states, it's indirect. In Maryland, it's direct. So let's just do it the smart way. Let's get that person covered with health care. So number one, they get the preliminary care, the preventive care to keep them from getting sick. And number two, it's all covered through the Medicaid system and not a jolt to our health insurance premiums. It's a hidden health care tax that we all pay for uninsured people's health care, including, I want to emphasize, and I'll get to this in a second, undocumented uh, persons. So automatic enrollment is good for everybody. So let's do it. It's something the government can, can do. Vinny, and, uh, talk, talk yes. for a minute, because I think some folks might be saying to themselves, okay, so if we enroll everyone in this inexpensive health care coverage, what's the, what is the quality of the coverage that an individual gets? I mean, some of us who've been fortunate enough to work with companies that have high quality health care, mm -hmm. you know, feel very, very fortunate to have access to that. What what's the quality of care that's I mean of health care that someone gets in one of these low cost plans? The Medicaid program uh, care is of good quality. And one of the things that's improved it recently in Maryland is we have very smartly increased reimbursement rates for doctors who provide Medicaid. At one point a few years ago, it was way too low. That meant that a lot of doctors didn't accept Medicaid patients. They couldn't afford it. But now we have increased those rates. And a lot of credit goes to the State Medical Society, Gene Ransom, and the group that have pushed for that, which is very smart. And we've been right there with them. So I would say the healthcare is quality. And thanks to the mental, um, Dental Health Coalition of Maryland, now there is dental care for people on Medicaid, which wasn't there before this year. So that's very, very important. So I think it, it, it is good care. So we're, we're, we're opting you into a good plan. So the second prong, Vinny, is let's make health insurance more affordable. What yeah. does your coalition believe needs to happen so that can take place? Okay, so think about three kind of categories of people who are uninsured. One category we just talked about, people who are eligible right now for free or very low cost healthcare. We wanna automatically enroll them. Then there are some folks above that income level for whom the federal subsidies are not quite enough. It's still hard for them. I really thank President Joe Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris for increasing Barack Obama's Affordable Care Act subsidies, uh, which hopefully will be renewed. And that has helped a lot more people get enrolled. But still, we need more uh, uh, subsidies. Massachusetts has the best uh, uh, state subsidies, and that's why they're at 3% uninsured. Uh, uh, with Senator Brian Feldman and Delegate Ken Kerr, we enacted a couple years ago in Maryland uh, a, a, a program of of a pilot program of subsidies for young people, additional subsidies for young people, 11,000 young people, 18 to 34, like, 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 like Mr. Nestor's age, got, uh, got um, uh, enrolled in, um, in, in healthcare and they weren't enrolled before. And again, getting them into the program helps everybody by keeping premiums lower. So additional subsidies on top of the Affordable Care Act uh, subsidies. So that's, that's the second leg of the stool. And the third Who pays for that, Vinny? Who pays that, for that, that? Well, that would come from the, the regular state budget. It would come from the regular state budget, uh, which is where the new subsidies come from. But again, it's something we all save when there are less of that health, uh, health, uh, hidden health care tax. So the is that the biggest is that the biggest obstacle, Vinny, with folks is trying to get them to understand. And Nestor said it's it's, it's there, right? It makes sense that somebody has to pay. Is yeah. your biggest obstacle to get the general public to understand that you may not like the additional subsidies, but in the long run, your cost will come down as well? Yes. And you know who used to say that so well is former Speaker Mike Bush. He really talked about that brilliantly. And that's what helped us get passed in 2007 before the Affordable Care Act expansion to 100,000 people under Medicaid, because he really said it over and over again. Uncompensated care is a hidden health care tax. I think that he came up with that phrase. And so so we, we the more people understand that, the more they support going from 6% to 0% uh, uh, uninsured. So let me get to the third leg while we still have some time. Which, it, which it, let's preface it by saying, Vinny, Prong three, I'm going to say the most controversial piece, yes, right? Yes. Oh, oh, yes. 
And this year, Delegate Jocelyn Peña Melnick, who's a wonderful new chair of the House Government Health and Government Operations Committee, and Senator Clarence Lamb, proposed legislation to make sure undocumented Marylanders get access to health care. Now, one of their two bills passed, which, which is going to allow undocumented mothers and their newborn children to get health care, which is great. That passed into law and, and is now there. But the broader coverage for other undocumented did not pass. And that, as you say, is more controversial. The fact of the matter is these folks are paying taxes, so they're paying into the system. And when they go to the hospital, where there's still that same hidden health care tax, whether you're documented We're delivering or not. that baby. We're delivering. You're delivering. Yes, that's exactly the way to put it. We're delivering that baby. We're not going to let someone die in the street, whatever their immigration status. Right, I want to go back to this because this, I, you know, Don took us in the other direction on your three prongs. But let's say this undocumented 17-year-old young lady in East Baltimore uh, wants an abortion. Uh, this is a good topic this week on the Roe versus Wade to say, or a 17 year old, uh, mother in Dundalk or wherever what well, says, all right, I, my girlfriend, mother of my son back in 1984 says, I want to have an, abor-. how does that work for getting help from your organization for that? Well, our, our organization does not provide services of any kind. I just but want to insurance emphasize that. providing that. Yeah, insurance provides it. Maryland has very good coverage uh, for for all. So that is the ticket to that. Is that if you're yes. insured, this yes. would this would okay. I'm, I'm yes yes. I'm right. asking for the for the hardship because yes. these are the questions I had to ask in 1984, and yes. there wasn't an organization like yours around. No, and 1984 was before a lot of these expansions happened, before President Obama's Affordable Care Act, before we did so much here in Maryland. But we have made a lot of progress, and I don't want to underest- understate that. The progress has been terrific, but we need to do more. And I'm hoping that the next governor and general assembly will be committed to two things. One is to finish the job on prescription drug affordability. The board we created in 2019 has great authority. They're chaired by wonderful man, former Health Secretary Van Mitchell, but they need further authority to make high cost drugs more affordable for everyone. They can make them more affordable for state and local governments, but for you and me and everybody, they need another piece of legislation passed. We're gonna hope to make that a top issue in this year's election to get that passed in 2023. And we hope the new governor and general assembly will be committed to our three prong approach to go from zero to 6% uninsured, to 0% uninsured, be the best in the nation and help everyone the way that hundreds of thousands of people have been helped over the last few years in Maryland. Here's where I get flipping with Don. Don, I'm going to Canada in September. I'm going to go up there and do a little research. I'll figure out how they're doing it up there. Because this is all so damn complicated and we all need it and we can't live without it. And there's people like Vinny out there trying to get that 6% in. And then there's Mr. Big and Mr. Pharma. And I had a pharmacy piece on last week with PBMs and all the money in between. My wife's diabetic, so my wife's on insulin. Uh, So, you know, it's it's a built-in that if she wants to breathe every day and be, you know, above ground with the rest of us, this is a cost. And it's $235 a vial versus 30. That's a whole different battle, but just having any kind of insurance at all is the root of all of this, that if you get sick, you don't lose everything that you have. And even if you don't have anything. Well, we need, go ahead, Vinny. I just say we need a hundred percent coverage of healthcare, which our goal is, and we need full authority for the Prescription Drug Affordability Board. We are being gouged by Big Pharma with these high prices that aren't necessary. Other countries don't have them because they have something like our board, and we're going to make that work. See, I brought that up for you. So I pay attention on this show, right? The right, you know, the right has peddled. Nestor, it's so interesting that you mentioned that you will be going to Canada because the right has peddled this notion that somehow all of these other European countries and countries in the world don't like having health care coverage. And I, keep, I say to them, and you and I have been many, many places, it's one of the first questions I always ask someone in another country. When you strike up a car, I say, what do you, what do you think about your health care coverage? And they almost look as if you have two heads. They're I like, hear the Kiwi guy say, you must be an American. <laughs> Everyone, what, what, what do you, what do you mean? Well, do you, do you like? Well, 
yeah, you know, it's like it's pretty basic. Well, here, I'll, I'll give this story on the way out, and uh, and and Vinny, I'll let you give your elevator speech at the door. But when my wife and I drove up to Nova Scotia to see Bruce Springsteen ten years ago, and we crossed the border, and I love Moosehead beer, and I and the first thing you see is Welcome Center gas. Kentucky Fried Chicken, and then, you know, and then there's the liquor store. And the liquor store is as big as a Walmart, right? So I walk in, and I'm like, oh, Moosehead might light lime. I pick it up, and I grabbed a 12-pack and two 12-packs, and it went up, and it was like 48 bucks. Canadian, but still 46 bucks or whatever. The, and I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I get a case of this at home at King Liquors. It's $22.99. I, when it said $22.99, I thought it was for a case. No, they're like, no, that's a 12-pack. And I said, well, what is it? And they're like, this is how we pay for our health insurance. And, and I like alcohol taxes. So Australia also, when you buy beer in Australia, it's yeah. more like a $2 a beer. It's 40. Yeah. You, if you get a $38 case of beer in Australia, it's a deal. And, it, you know, and sticker shock when you're downtown and it's $72 for a case of beer, you're like, that's three dollars a beer. You don't think anything about paying eight dollars at a bar, but like, but that's how it works there. And everyone has. So Don, to answer your question, when I when I drive from Quebec through Montreal to Ottawa chasing Pearl Jam in September, I'm gonna buy beer and get sticker shock because that's how they pay for it. That's how. Uh, they well, we, it. yeah, we passed alcohol and tobacco taxes in Maryland to pay for health care. Also, that also reduces underage drinking and teen smoking. So it's great public health tools. Go Canada. Well, well you my, my great... friends running a marathon in Santa Barbara. I said, take a picture of the gas station when you with the seven dollar a gallon of gas because it's <laughs> we. It all comes in different ways. We're driving to New York this week. It's gonna be twenty dollars to cross the bridge, right? Like, I no. mean, the, the money has to come from somewhere, right? With without a doubt. Hey, Vinny, you've had over twenty. This is a great graphic you have on your website. I would encourage folks healthcareforall.com. Really, it really a terrific advocacy group, but th this graphic talks about expanding access, reducing prescription drugs, advancing equity. What are you, what are you the most proud of when you look back at what you guys have done, Vinny? It's reducing the number of uninsured in Maryland from 13% of our population to 6%. 400,000 people have gotten healthcare. And one of the reasons, I don't want to leave this out, we have the best health benefit exchange in the country under Democratic and Republican governors. They've done a great job and wonderful legislative leaders. We need to do the whole thing. Go from 6% to 0%. And I, we can do it with well, our You're more than halfway program. there. I've done the yes. math on that. I'm pretty good. V Vinny, we appreciate <laughs> you. you. Vinny, tell everybody how to get involved if they want to uh, get in touch with you. Healthcareforall.com. Healthcareforall.com. Healthcare, Healthcare, hey, man, that's that's better than the Maryland initiative. Yeah, yeah. Healthcareforall.com. <laughs> and listen, gentlemen, have me back on in September when we ask all these candidates for governor and general assembly to endorse our plan. Have me you back on it. in September. All right. Vinny DeMarco joining Thank us you. here. Healthcare. For all. For all. I love that. It's easy uh -huh. enough. That's easy uh -huh. enough. Uh, on behalf of former Baltimore County Executive Don Moeller, we call these things wise conversations because they kind of are. I learn stuff around here. Um, and people ask me, what is Baltimore positive? I'm like, it's me asking smarter people dumb questions and trying to get some knowledge. So that's a wise conversation. He's Don. I'm Nestor. We are WNST AM 1570 Towson, Baltimore. And we never stop talking. Baltimore positive.